So the left has a lot of stupid ideas from Bernie Sanders to AOC. It's just one dumb, impractical thing after another. If something hasn't worked and has never been able to ma be made to work, why just keep trying it again and again? Well, to consolidate power in the hands of a few. And in fact, that's our primary problem right now. We've seen with Joe Biden's mandate. Now, as an update, my Navy friend was forced to take his first shot. He had been fighting it for about eight months. He pointed out they didn't have supplies of the Comirnaty, which is what the order applied to. And he was working on religious ex uh, exemption, but they just came and said, they sent him a letter, said, you have 10 days to comply or you're out of the Navy. He has three kids. His wife's recovering from cancer. He lives in base housing. They cornered him. He had no way out. There was nowhere else to go. There was nothing else to do. That, that's an atrocity. That is an atrocity of centralized power in the hands of a few against a man that had to take a medication he did not want to take. In fact, he didn't need to, uh, he didn't need to take it because he had had the uh, cold 19 just three or four weeks earlier. There was no reason to subject him to the risks. But how did we get here, right? Because now we're seeing Joe Biden threaten it on us all, threatening to upend the entire business world. And the noose is only getting tighter. Luckily, Republicans in various state and even Gretchen Whitmer are pushing back on it. We'll see how it goes. Prepare, don't predict. But again, why have we been able to be abused so hard by the powerful, by the government? This wouldn't have flown in the 90s. Well, uh, I recently did a full audio narration of the book Dictatorship to Democracy. I've uploaded it to my YouTube it's, uh, it's having some trouble getting up here on BitChute. Uh, go to YouTube, Heavy Rain, and, and there it is. Either that, read the book, listen to someone else narrate it, listen to me narrate it. You need to get this information in your head in order to take effective action rather than blowing your, your power in the world on symbolic action or, even worse, no action at all. You need to get this idea in your head because... Authoritarian regimes can be dissolved. It can be disintegrated. There is hope. And in fact, there's a mechanical step-by-step -step process you can follow. It's all outlined in the book, Dictatorship to Democracy. It will give you confidence. It will give you direction. It will give you hope. You can see what it is you can do. But a big part of it is we don't have enough, quote, people power. That means our institutions that are not controlled by the government churches, community things, unions, work groups, or and individuals, right? We have all become too weak so that Joe Biden can just point at you and say, you will take this, and you got to kind of shrug your shoulders and go, well, my will is no longer taken into account. Now, 600,000 USPS workers are exempted. Why? Because they had the people power, because they had that union, that unity, that strength to oppose the government. It, it isn't a, uh, people are looking for a, a truth or the balance of justice in some sort of negotiation. There is no balance of justice. Get that idea out of your head. It is merely who has power and who doesn't. It is the relative balance of power, of course, again, covered in dictatorship and democracy. In a big way, we in America have made ourselves vulnerable is through debt. Buying your TV on debt, buying your car on debt. You're, we're all leveraged to the hilt to the point we can't take a day or two off work to protest some sort of vast mandate that goes against freedom, the Constitution, our individual will, maybe medical or religious beliefs, whatever the case may be. We are too weak to resist. And it's not really Biden, right? We know there's non-governmental organizations. You've heard of NGOs. What we have is a non-governmental authoritarians. We have a Bill Gates and a Klaus Schwab and a Soros. The, these are primarily the people pulling the strings and the Democrats and Biden and the rhinos are kind of the puppets. But that notwithstanding, we're too weak. So what can we do? Well, as I pointed out, the left has a lot of dumb ideas, but they do have one that I think the right would be you could make a compromise and you could come out with actual policy that 
could change things. It could return the balance of power to some degree to the individual, which ironically, it's ironic the left supports it because if it were passed, it would give us greater ability to resist the power of centralized government. And it's called a debt jubilee. It's actually a Jewish economic tradition, and it goes all the way back into the Old Testament. You can hear about it Hammurabi, you can hear about it in ancient Egypt. Uh, it's described in the book of Leviticus in chapter 25, and the idea is simple. At the end of 49 years, all debts would be wiped out and collateral property returned. It was a way of completely resetting. Talk about your great reset, right? I hope you've been reading your daily wells because this is off of a daily wealth, but it's a way of completely resetting the financial order because the gap between the rich and the poor has gotten too great. Bill Gates has way too much power and the average farmer way too little. And it's financial. So this was a way, debt ju jubilee is a way of making sure the wealthy didn't become too dominant. Well, guess what? We're there. And making sure the economy didn't collapse and preventing a violent revolution. Debt jubilee. Uh, look at student loans. Some, uh, you get a debt, a mortgage in some cases, or near it, that you can't discharge in bankruptcy. That's indentured servitude. Indentured servitude is a form of slavery. That's predatory loaning. The right and the left should be able to agree on this. And think about if you free, like it's triage. It's not an ideal situation. Debt jubilee in ancient times was used because you hit crises. It's, it's not to reward bad behavior. It's to prevent an even worse scenario from playing out. Uh, Porter Stansberry's talked about it even more. He says a major debt jubilee is coming to America. And he thinks, he thinks it's, it's going to be here. And in order for this to happen, he says there has to be a dramatic wealth gap that is getting bigger. You know, check. There must be cultural threats from those with different values or outsiders. In other words, minority populations and immigrants. Check. The government must be ineffective at providing solutions. Yeah. And uh, there must be growing anger towards the elites. Yeah, that's where we are. And eliminating debt. And, and you might crunch some banks, right? Uh, it's kind of the story of Fight Club. He says there's a name for this type of political and social phenomenon. It's called populism, and it emerges every 30 to 40 years. Populist movements are characterized by extreme anger at the government, at the wealthy, at the establishments, and at the newcomers. You can see that populist movements are at their highest level since the 1930s. And it's even getting mainstream attention. Justin Brill writes about this. Total household debt continues to climb, and as of the fourth quarter of 2017 was $13 trillion. The entire GDP of the United States is about 20 And of course, credit card debt is leading the way. Cut up your credit cards, or rather pay them off and lock them up somewhere so you quit using them. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. This is what has been used to weaken you. This is why they can force you to take a shot, because Americans have no money. This is why I cover the market from time to time. Even though I know it's not as exciting as, you know, AOC's dress, this is the important stuff. Your nest egg, your wealth, your resources are a big component of your power in society. And if you have none of it and you're not working on building it, it's kind of hard to complain when authoritarians step in, right? You've given them all of your power. Don't do that. It's bad. Student loans were way up. Auto loans. Like, Americans are just making bad decisions. Yes, you need a mortgage. Yes, there is a certain amount of good debt. Particularly, say, if you're running a business and it allows you to buy more machines to bulldoze, whatever. But you really got to be careful with it because it makes you vulnerable. So if you are in debt, make a plan to get out of it. If you're not in debt, uh, well, start bolstering your finances. I am running some fairly tight trading stops or trailing stops rather because I don't trust this market. I don't trust this president. I don't trust this rally. And I'm starting to raise cash to be able to take advantage of the next crisis. Now make your own decisions, but get yourself out of debt. We got to get this people power because I'm tired of getting walked on by rich people. And look, the left has a lot of dumb ideas, but when they do bring up 
things like debt forgiveness, realize that this is an ancient tradition that makes it robust in the Nassim Taleb sense. It's something that's been around for thousands and thousands of years. It's tried and true. And it's a great reset that can actually help right the imbalances of power in society. It's a great reset that can make the great reset that they want impossible.